CataractCoach.com. Dislocated IOL replaced with an AC IOL. Is implanting an anterior chamber IOL still a good option for patients? Let's watch this case here. Anonymous surgeon is operating. Look at that capsular phimosis. Wow. So when you have this bad capsular phimosis, that can really cause all the zonular support to just erode away. As that capsule keeps contracting, shrink wrapping down, and you get that phimotic edge there, then that means you're just pulling on that zonular support, and it looks like this whole thing is pretty mobile. Now it looks like a surgeon's coming from on top, above, to try to go around the IOL. But boy, you got to wonder, where is that instrument going in the vitreous cavity? You may want to just do a pars plana incision there. You can do a pars plana incision to help push it up from the below. That is sometimes easier. But you can see, wow, this whole capsule's got to come up. Grab it with forceps, I like that. So let's see, getting that up. There's really minimal zonular support at all. You just got to be careful this doesn't go south, go into the vitreous cavity. So there's a big Sommerings ring. There's the IOL. There's the whole bag. Everything's just coming out. There's really no bag support at all. Wow, there's no zonular support whatsoever. So again, that's, that looks great. Bring it up in the AC. I like the technique, getting it up above the iris so it doesn't fall back. And now explanting it. Now you can do our twist and out technique to explant it, but if you're going to put an AC lens in, probably want to make an incision. So now I'm measuring white to white because you're going to use that to help guide the sizing for the AC lens. So remember, AC lens is coming not only different dioptric patterns, but also physical sizes. So here, I would, no, I would not enlarge that incision. I don't think it's a good idea to make a six plus millimeter wide corneal incision. I would have preferred to do a scleral tunnel in this case because this is a large, large incision here. And now you can just you know, pull the lens out. You're going to need the large incision anyway to put the AC lens in, but I always taught my residents that you should use a scleral tunnel to implant any kind of lens like that, a non-foldable or an AC lens. So pulling that existing lens out, there it is. I usually like to place it on top of the cornea so I can examine it a little bit. Now you're certainly going to need to do some sort of vitrectomy and cleanup here. So pupil came down nicely, and so it looks like a meiotic agent being instilled. Again, you may want to put a little triamcinolone there just to see, is there any prolapse vitreous? Because I don't think the anterior hyaloid base is going to be fully intact here. And let's take a look what's happening now. It looks like just more meiotic agent. Pupil does not appear peaked, so maybe you don't have to do the vitrectum. Here's the AC lens, placing that inside the eye, anterior chamber full of viscoelastic. Now, to place this anterior chamber lens, you have to look, is it the correct orientation or is it flipped over? Remember, you don't want to put it upside down. These lenses are vaulted. The key is to look at the haptic optic junction, and that should be the anti-S. That should be like a traditional, you know, a IOL that you place in the posterior chamber. And so that looks good, good positioning. Pupil is not peaked, so maybe you don't need the vitrectomy. You definitely need to make a little peripheral iridotomy. So there's a small bit PI being done. And the reason is you can see that optic overlaps and covers up the pupil there. And so you may not get sufficient flow. So there you go. Good PI that is definitely patent and open and now suturing up the main incision. So I like the case here. I would have done it a little bit differently. I would have done a pars plana incision at the beginning just to support the lens from behind and bring it up. I think I would have also done a scleral tunnel to um, access inside the eye and insert this large lens. This lens is a six millimeter optic. So you're probably doing a 6.5 millimeter incision. That's a pretty big incision. And then I think uh, I would have also placed some triamcinolone just to check to see if you need to do an anterior vitrectomy. You're already there, you may as well. And so cleaning up again. Let's see, uh, injecting perhaps more meiotic agent. Not sure exactly what's going on there. But yeah, the triamcinolone would have helped to make sure that there is no prolapse vitreous. And so now suturing up that cornea incision, just not going to heal up well. A large incision like that on the cornea, the cornea is such an avascular tissue. I just think it's going to be less than optimal healing. You may want to leave those sutures in for a long, long time. Luckily, the tunnel length of the incision is nice, sufficiently long. So by suturing it up, you're going to have a you know, mild degree of astigmatic effect here. I do like that suture that was placed. That looks pretty good. Just tie the ends down and get that knot buried. But interesting case here. So I think there's still a role for AC lenses. If you look at published meta-analyses of the data, the patients who get an anterior chamber lens that's well-placed like this can actually have the same outcome as a patient who gets 
a scleral fixated posterior chamber lens. There are other options as well around the world, but not in the U.S. We don't have iris clip lenses for aphakia, the ones that we can clip onto the back surface of the iris. I think if you're using an AC lens, that's acceptable. Do it right, make a good incision, place it in the eye appropriately, just like you see in this case, where it's well-centered and not, not distorting the iris of the pupil. Remember to put the peripheral dotomy in, and the outcome looks pretty good.